Welcome to part two of the memory basket tutorial. In this video, we will be learning how to create those items that are on the inside minus the flowers and handkerchief. The tutorial for the acetate flower will be in a separate video. If you have missed out on the video to create the basket, I will have that linked down below. I will also have linked down below the video on the full reveal of the memory basket. Now let's get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about in our memory basket is the coin purse. Now I created this coin purse using Cricut Design Space. I went in and I looked for a coin purse that I liked. I found this image and I cut it out and put it together. When you open it, which is held together by a Velcro dot, it has this centerpiece where you can actually tuck something behind and I've tucked in a little coin. And this coin came from the Dollar Tree. I knew I'd get to use those. <laughs> and this was so easy to make. Of course, that is if you have Cricut Design Space. I imagine you could do this on your own without a cutting machine. So let's put our coin purse away and get out our next item and that is a little mini photo album. So let me open this up to show you the whole thing. And here it is. Now, I used a piece of green cardstock that measured 10 and a half by three and five eighths. And then I scored it at three and a half and seven. And then I just burnished everything and folded it over. And then you have a little fold out. To decorate this, I used the Ireland Forever paper and I wanted to leave spaces so that you could add photos, even on the back. And then I liked the idea of popping it open and then having a photo already there in the center. Really simple to make. For the closure, let me get my tool, I wanna to show you that. I picked up this tag hole maker at Amazon. And I'll just show you here real quick. It cuts that out. I love this. I've only used it a couple times, but it's so easy to use. And so I cut that out there. I took my ribbon, which I got from Hobby Lobby, the ribbon boutique. And I actually hand sewed it just a little bit there on the end so that I could wrap it around a couple times and then loop it back on itself as a closure. And I added a charm here on the bottom. It's a heart charm, and it gives it a really nice weight to keep it pulled down. So that was a nice little piece to create as something to include in your memory basket. Okay, now let's go on to the next item in our basket here, our letter. So in the paper collection, there is this one sheet and it has this envelope here and I just loved it. It has the floral, a postage stamp there as if someone wrote it out and then it even has a little sentiment on that. Well, I definitely wanted to use that. So I fussy cut this out and then I ad adhered it to an envelope. And I had these envelopes in my stash and I haven't been using them, so I thought I'd use it what I really liked about it is that when you opened it, it had, you know, a pattern on the inside. So this envelope measures five and an eighth by three and three fourths. And so I cut this out, adhered it to the front. I opened the envelope, added this to my cardstock here like this traced around it, cut it out, and then added it here. On the bottom, I kind of guessed, actually, but I did fussy cut out this as well as adhered it. Now, I didn't do the sides because I liked the way that that looked 
with the other pattern paper. So I left that there. But then I did take some wax and a bee and crown seal and made a little impression there because I love the way that that looked. So that was really easy to make when you already have an envelope as your base. For the inside, I actually had um, some ephemera pieces that I got digitally, and so I just printed that out on copy stained paper that I created, and I kind of shrunk down the text so that it would fit. I fussy cut this out so that it was kind of wavy. It wasn't just straight because, you know, in the olden days, it wasn't always straight. <laughs> And then I aged it a little bit with vintage photo and included that here as her secret letter. So that was how I created the envelope. So let's put this back in our basket because the main thing that I want to spend our time on is the journal. To create the base of this journal, I went through the paper collection and I cut out paper that I liked and I then cut that down to be seven by five, and then I scored it in half at three and a half. So your journal comes out to three and a half by five. It's a really nice small size. What he, I did was I took each page and I sewed around all of the pages. So throughout the journal, well, I have notes, but throughout the journal, you'll see sewing around all the pages. Once I did that, I then found some ruffle ribbon. And I picked this up from Hobby Lobby. It's called the Ivory Pleated Trim by Decorative Trim. And then I sewed down the center of that. I really like the idea of it overlapping here on the edge just as a nice decorative piece. To adhere all the pages, I put it in my sewing machine and I sewed straight down the center. I used gold and then like an ivory thread. So that's how I got what you see here. The base pages all put together like a journal. What we're going to do is the decorating of the pages. I'm going to kind of talk through my process for that. And we're going to add a decorative piece to the spine. I wanted to create this journal with you, but I also wanted to save you time. So that's why I went ahead and did all my sewing and actually sewed it together. Okay, so let's get started on decorating this. The first thing I thought we would do is actually add the decorative piece that I have for the spine. What I've done is taken one of the hanging green file folders and I've cut that down to where I could use this. Now this is very sturdy paper, cardstock like, so that's why I thought it would be perfect for the spine. I used a decorative punch, it was a decorative doily punch here on the edge to give it a little something. And I'm going to add one side at a time so that it stretches across the design. So I'm just lining it up here. I'm going to start with the back. Of course, my glue is going to come out of the holes, but that's all right. And then I'm going to work it over to the front. Now you could open this up and do it that way as well. But we want to make sure that it's going to not buckle when it's open like that. Yeah, see? Just gonna have to work with the paper a little bit. Yeah, that's better. See, before it was buckling and opening right up. Now it's good. So 
I think I'm gonna give this a few minutes to dry before we move forward. Okay, so this is all dry and that looks good. So that's going to be my journal cover. I don't normally use cherubs, but when I put this on the cover, I just really liked the way that it looked. So I ended up using it. <laughs> so now we're going to go and work on the inside pages. The first thing I did when I had all my pages cut and scored, I kind of laid it out like a book and I would go through each page one at a time and I would figure out what I wanted to do on each page. So as I went through it, I left them there loosely and just kept going through. And then that's kind of where you see me start using little post-it notes and I left those in there so I wouldn't forget how I wanted the design. But when I wanted to sew everything, I needed a way to store what I had figured out. So what I did was I used this box and I had these, um, these are adhesive pockets, large ones. And so I thought these would be perfect to hold all of my little pieces parts. So each one of these is a page decoration or it could be two page decorations if they're facing each other. So this is what I'll be pulling from to decorate our pages. Now for our first envelope, you'll see what I have in it. And then I will typically have a little postie saying what I wanted done. Now on this one, um, that actually goes with the second page here. Yeah, so we got two done. <laughs> so on the inside cover, I wanted a pocket because this doesn't actually have a lot of pockets in it, which is unusual for me. And so I took, an extra piece that had been cut, I tore down one side of it and adhered it, you know, like a pocket here. And then of course it got sewed around the two sides, which I really love that. Now I'm doing this tear technique throughout the journal. I have tear and straight um, edges throughout, and I really love this. Because the way that I see this is this is just a journal that she has. She throws everything in it that she has that she wants to hold on as a memory, maybe pressed flowers, you know, tickets, notes, bus tickets, things like that. It's just a catch-all. So I love the idea of this being torn. It just really makes it vintage for me. So in the front pocket, I've had these tags from the Hobby Lobby, the paper studio, and this was the uncharted tags. And I've been wanting to use them. I haven't used them at all, and it's been at least two years now. So I found this one, and it only had the green, white, and the cream color. So what I decided to do, because the paper only has those like gold tones, uh, tan, beige, whites, greens, I wanted to stay within that color family. So this is like a tonal journal, which is also different for me. I don't usually do that. Now it might have a pop of color. At least twice I added two butterflies and they might have color on them, but I really try to stay very tonal with the paper. I like that idea too. So we're just going to put this little tag right here in the front and it can, you know, hang out. That's okay with me. I don't mind. Or you could cut them to be shorter. Let's see how we like that. It is a little distracting. Um, we could cut these down. Now this is just lace that I had in my stash. Probably got it from Dollar Tree. And I took vintage photo and rubbed over it and it made it, um, kind of tinted and aged. So I'm just going to cut these down a little bit. And we'll put that back in here. And I think I like that better where it's not so much of it is hanging out. For the next page, what I did was fussy cut out this rose that's in the paper. I took some coffee dyed paper that I made a while ago and I just cut out a little ticket shape 
I added some of that ribbon at the top and I actually sewed through it a little bit. And I'm going to use that as our little tuck spot there because I love this background, the clock background, it's so gorgeous. I wanted to see more of it. So now we are on to our next page and I'll pull out the items I had for that. Here's my little notes. <laughs> so on this page here, I just wanted to add this floral and I cut this out of Cricut Design Space. And I actually cut out several different designs. All I did was put in the word flower and a whole bunch came up and I went through and picked out the ones that were more like silhouettes and I cut those all out of um, just regular, uh, this one I think is just a cream color, but I also have some file folder that I cut out of a file folder. And I, that's a really nice weight for something so delicate like this. Then what I did was I took some ink and I inked around the edges. I used archival ink as well as distress ink. Again, trying to stay within the color family. So I'm just adding that to this little page here as a decorative piece. Now on this side, I also wanted to leave room for journaling because I believe in journaling. <laughs> so on this page here, I had some arrow ribbon. And let's see, this is the Robert Stanley collection. I'm not sure where I got it. Maybe a Hobby Lobby? Yeah. Yeah, I got this from Hobby Lobby. I like the arrows and I like the edge because it's all ravelly. So I wanted to make this a little tuck spot as well. I added a vintage ticket that I bought from someone on Etsy and I added a little bow bunny sticker button. I even kind of sewed in the center there just to give it a little bit of thread. And so I'm going to adhere that down like a little tuck spot. Now, as you can see, I sewed uh, the ticket and the, the ribbon there together. So I just realized I don't have anything to tuck in there. So I'll have to find something to tuck in there later. Okay, on to our next page. Now for this page, we're going to add some more of the floral that I cut out. You can tell these are from the file folder, but they have a really nice color to them. And I'm using this little piece here, and this is from a vintage piano, player piano. So I bought this, I think, I think it was off of Etsy. And it's a whole spool of the um, piano paper, the player piano roll. Isn't that neat? <laughs> so cool. So I went in a little bit and I cut some out and we I used that throughout this journal. It's a really nice delicate piece. It's um, a little thicker than vellum paper, but it's still kind of see-through. So I really like that a lot. So what I decided was to add that over here because I wanted these florals to show through. I really like those. So I thought that would look good here. And then I was going to add a flower here and over here in the corner. Now I did not um, ink these. I did this one so that it would go better with the page, but I didn't really ink a lot of these because I liked the color that they were. Actually, I need to stick down my piano paper first. So let's get going on that. Now, and if you look here, I, um, 
I tore the edges of the paper as well and used vintage photo on all of them. And I must say you're able to use glue and it doesn't show through that much like it does with vellum. So that's really nice. Then we'll add this one down here. I just love the idea of adding these floral pieces. And there's our spread. Now I did find these lace pieces in my stash and I think I'm gonna add one here, just across. Yeah, I like that. Because I could imagine in a journal like this that you would have just little pieces throughout. Okay, here's our next page. I pulled out the pieces for that. Here's my little note. For this page, I wanted to incorporate a pocket. So I, again, found just a little scrap that I had from all the pages that I've been using from the collection. I tore across the top and inked it and then sewed around the corners. I'm gonna add that down here. Okay. So what I also have here is um, coffee dyed graph paper. I found this graph paper at our local Goodwill actually. And so I coffee dyed that, cut out this little square. This measures five and a half by three and a half. Folded that in half. I added some of this gold glitter washi. And then I added uh, just a scrap of the piano piece, piano paper right here and then that trim again, and then sew down on the trim. And then that's going to tuck right here in our little pocket. I like that a lot. And then I added the trim just over here in the corner and it got sewed down as well. So I'm going to kind of leave this for journaling and you can add a photo here. I actually even have these old photos um, from Alpha Stamps. I got this as a freebie. And I was thinking about incorporating this girl with the floral, I thought that would go great with the journal. Oh, that's cute. Then we could add a little bit of ribbon or lace here, or even adhesive. Okay, hold on. Okay, so I went ahead and inked that. I was thinking, whoops, we could use the washi. I'm loving the color of this washi. It's like not gold gold. You know what I'm saying? Here we are. Oh, because I have washi over here. Maybe that would be better. Oh my gosh. How cute is that? <laughs> Love it. All right. Do I still want to add fabric? Well, I guess I should glue her down, huh? Okay, we're gonna leave that because I can't figure out if I want anything else on there, but that's cute. Okay. <laughs> now on this page, what I've already added here is some trim that I got from the Dollar Tree at Christmas time. It was this gold netted trim. So I added that here because I wanted to play off the gold on the page. And then I did some stamping on this page and I did it in a uh, vintage photo so that it would kind of mirror the gold going on over here. And I used a new stencil. 
I just got this at Joann's. I haven't even hauled it yet. But this is uh, Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous, and it was a set. So you got this stencil. Here's the stencil. And you got this stamp, stamp set, and that's the one with all the bugs. And so, of course, I had to use it. So I used this stamp here with the holes, uh, like a splatter, to do that stamping there. And then I used, he has figure one, figure two. So I used figure one, I covered up the two with the washi and then stamped it. And then I used this number 4899 and I stamped that here as well because we pull out our little envelope. I want to add this little flower here. So it's like figure one. So I thought that would be cute right there. Oh, we need to glue this. When I started this journal, I really had no idea where I was going with it. And then once I got started, I was really enjoying myself. <laughs> Probably should put a little glue on the washi. Just to hold that down a bit. And look how cute that is with the washi across there. I love it. Now I don't want to put anything else down because I want to leave room for writing here. And she could even write a little bit over here at a photo. I'm a bit of a minimalist. Okay, on to our next page. See, I included a butterfly and even then I just chose one that had green, white, black, the tones that are already matching the journal, just so it would be tone on tone. Oh, I left a little note tissue. Hobby Lobby paper. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. I'm also trying to show you the supplies that I used along the way just to give you ideas of what you could use if you've never made a journal like this before. So for this one, I do have a another floral that I cut out and I used um, brown paper for this one. I think, no, I think that's going over here. I kind of forget. What does my note say? Floral on the right. Yep, floral on the right. Okay, so let's start by looking at this page. On this side of the page, I added this tissue paper and I used Tim Holtz collage paper that I got from Hobby Lobby when it was on sale. And it is the typography tissue paper. I love this stuff. Now, what I've done, uh, normally you take Mod Podge or his uh, matte medium and you put um, some matte medium down, you add your tissue paper, and then you, you know, go over it again with the same stuff. Well, what I did was I tore out a piece that I wanted to use, and then I just used my art glitter glue and glued it down. It gives it a different look, and I really like that. So all I'm going to do on this side is actually add this butterfly to go over it. That way there's room for writing there, and it still looks pretty. <laughs> so on this side, I'm going to add my flowers. Oh, and I added that same tissue paper over here as well on that side. So we have it here and here. And I think that's what I was gonna do, something like that. Now this piece that I'm including, I like it because there's script on there, there's some greenery here, and then some little design up there. This came off of this roll that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. This was their decorative paper they had in the uh, craft area. And this is the paper design. 
super pretty. I hardly ever get to use this, and I thought this was the perfect journal to include it in. So I've actually used this several times. I don't think that this is available anymore, but if you have any nature pattern decorative paper, that would work that as well. So I actually cut out this little piece. I don't think I did this yet. Okay, now I was going to add that across it, I think. And then this, and this is actually a Tim Holtz ticket. When I was at Hobby Lobby one time, they had his ticket pattern fabric in like the closeout bin or something. So I bought a yard of it. I love this. So I just cut out one of the individual tickets that's on it. And that's what I'm going to use here, this little one right there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down. And actually I was gonna put the flower over the paper I did it wrong, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna add this further down on the page. So I'm kind of just decorating it a little bit. There. And there's our two pages. Now we're at the center of the journal. Okay. So on this one, I was using that piano paper again. I've already tore it out and inked it. Look, I even put diagrams on my little note. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so on the left-hand side, I was gonna go like this and put the little ticket there. And on the right hand side, I was gonna go further up and add the little ticket up here. Yeah, just kind of, so it's like diagonal. Now I'm adding these piano paper here to create uh, writing space. So you could certainly could write around the corner of the um, of the print here, but I wanted to add some more space. So now she can write all the way, whoever <laughs> can write all the way across. All right, we're going to add our little ticket. I did have a couple extra flowers and then I had this little piece that I cut off the graph paper. I did think about using that. I kind of like the hole on there. All right, well, we're gonna leave that there for now. See, I even cut this red piece off of one of the tickets because I didn't want to incorporate a color. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next page here. Hanging floral, right side pocket tag. Now here's another floral that I did ink. And I used this peeled paint for that one. For this one, I was going to have it hang down this way. So we can go ahead and add that. You know, you can really design these pages any way that you want them. And then again, I'm going to add my little bit of washi across the bottom. I really am liking that look. It just looks like a little specimen. <laughs> okay, so that's that page. For this page, I created a side pocket. Again, I took a piece of scrap from the collection I've been using tore it on the one side and sewed it down onto the page. 
So what we're going to put in the packet is a little tag and I've been using these market tags from Seven Gypsies. I've had these forever, it seems. I got them at Tuesday morning and they're a nice little size. They are four and a fourth by one and five eighths. And so again, I use that rolled paper, this stuff, and I picked a piece on the paper that I liked, cut it out, glued it on, and then instead of lace or trim or yarn or ribbon, I actually used the piano paper to create the little tassel here at the top. I love how that looks, very dainty. So that's gonna go here in our little pocket. And then for this, I just had some extra um, coffee dyed paper and I just kind of made a little flip out of that to tuck under here as well. Now, um, oh, I should talk about the paper here. So this paper is actually drywall paper and I bought this from Home Depot. I love this paper only because I love the green color and it's so thin, I love how it sounds. It comes in this massive roll. It's going to take me forever to use this, but that's okay. <laughs> so that's what this page is made of, that drywall paper. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> Wanted to make sure I told you that. Okay, on to the next page here. Now, because that paper is flimsy, I wanted to make sure I did something on the back side of this to make it a little bit more sturdy. So I have my little notes here. What I decided to do was create a little, um, a coin pocket tuck. So that's what I'm gonna be doing, is a coin pocket tuck. So here is the coin envelope. I got these at the Dollar Tree. And what I did was I, again, took my decorative paper, I kind of put it over like that, went around it in a pencil, cut it out, and then adhered it here. And I did it on the front and the underside because when you open it, you would see it. And I'm trying to cover up this color of the coin envelope. I also took a piece of scrap and I added it here on the inside of the coin envelope because there is just a little bit that you see right here. Now it doesn't have to be this big of a piece. It could be smaller. That's just what I had, so I stuck it on. Now this coin envelope measures four and a fourth by two and a half and it fits perfect on this page. I love that. It fits and it shows the gold sewing going around it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So to decorate this, what I did was actually opened up the envelope like this so that I could cut this piece. And this piece here covers the front like that. Now to create the piece that decorates the front of the coin envelope, what I did was I opened up the coin envelope. I took a piece and I cut it out to be two and a half by four and a fourth, the size of the coin envelope. I stuck that in here and then I closed this up, took my pencil, made a mark where the envelope flaps met so I could get that sloping design and then I cut that out and this is what I have the piece that matches it's a great way to do that so now that I have all this together I need to go ahead and close up the envelope now I did leave it to where you could see just the slightest little bit of the actual coin envelope but I did that because you can see it a little bit right here where the flap folds. So it makes a nice match there. 
And now we have our decorative coin envelope. Now I did add a Velcro piece to the top here for it to keep closed. And now we can add it to our decorative part. There we go. And I have a tag. So actually I use this K and Company tag set for this tag. And then I used the Uncharted tags from Hobby Lobby for this tag that I'm going to use for the coin envelope. It actually fit pretty good. I only had to cut off a fourth of an inch to get it to fit into the actual envelope. So that was great. I did add some uh, gold trim that I found. I actually keep this little bag of scrap trims. So when I need just a little piece of trim, I'll come in here and look. See, I have all kinds of stuff. And um, that's where I get it. So I saw a gold piece in that. And I just added that here with the Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher. And this will fit right in there. Now I was worried about the, the actual ribbon because it's right in the way of where we close it. So maybe we can cut this down a little bit. I really just wanted the ribbon on so that you'd have something to pull it out of the coin envelope. still in the way. I think I'm just going to move these. Oh, am I going to be able to? Because I put glue on this one. Oh. It does make a little mark. I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> there we go. And you can't even really see where it was. So there we go. Now that I've shown you these, I'm going to adhere this to the bottom of the page. And I'm only gonna do it on the top and the bottom. Okay. Might need to add another Velcro dot over here just so that it's even. So now that our coin envelope is down, I had created another one of the little tags. I'm really loving these. And we can just slip that in the back of the policy envelope. Now, I think I'm going to cut this down or tear it because that's how I've done those so that it doesn't go out beyond the ruffle. There, like that. Now, let's see what my note said. On the right, add floral. So that's all I got is a floral. I think it needs something more. Oh, I like that. Okay, let's put this down. You know what it needs right there is a stamp. I think I'm going to go get a stamp. And we can put that across there. I'll be right back. So I got this little packet of stamps from AliExpress. It was $1 to get all these. And let's see if we can find one with the right colors. So like the only pop of color I've been using is the, is the green. Wish we had a nice floral that I mean maybe I'll just use that one. Oh there's a house. 
Oh, that don't look bad at all. Okay. There's one, but it has purple. Not using it. I'm sticking to my guns. Now here is one that, but that yellow, I thought maybe it would look like the gold. I kind of like in this house. Did I show you that? That is cute. Let's see what this looks like. Hmm, I'm not liking it. I think I want the house. Ooh, I like that. Let's see how do we want to do it. Like that underneath. What do you think? Or should it be up at the top here? I'm pulling up the lace I just put down. No, because then that box is in that. Or should this be somewhere else altogether? Let's try it over here. Oh, uh, uh, I just remembered. I just remembered what I'm doing over there, so I'm not going to put it there. Okay, I'm going to lay it, add it down. Mm. Oh, that would have been cool under the flower. Why didn't you guys think of that? <laughs> All right, I'm just going to put it down there because <laughs> I don't know where else to put it and I want to use it. Let's add our lace back. Now, I not only buy the stamps, but I um, save them on envelopes that I get in the mail. Get over there. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Let me put this piece down here. Yeah, I think I like that. Now, over here, I was going to do some stamping. And I have some music notes. So I have these Nola Blake clear stamps. I don't know where I got it. Oh, Tuesday morning. And it had these music notes on it. And I thought it would be neat to pull over the music notes from here onto the policy envelope. So I'm just gonna use archival ink. So now it mirrors over here. Okay, on to the next page. And our envelope. Oh yeah, I was doing something different with this one. Oh, I didn't sew the vellum on. Ooh, too late for that. We'll do something different. <laughs> All right, so apparently I wanted to sew this in, and I forgot. So this is a image that I have digitally, and I can't remember at the moment where I got it from, but I love it. It has an old uh, camera on it. There's actually a bee there, some floral, and I thought this was perfect to go with this journal. I cut this down to be three and a fourth by five. And I was going to sew this in across the top, and then you would use it as a flip so that you could do maybe some secret of journaling or add a secret photo down there. But I forgot to sew it, so we'll just add it with glue. So when I cut this, I cut it slightly smaller than the page so that it wouldn't interfere when you fold it and everything. Yeah, see, it fits right in there. How nice is that? I like it. I mean, you can see the thread through the vellum there at the top. Hmm. Yeah, just flip it up. Do your little journaling or add a photo and secretive. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So what else did my note say? So Velamon didn't do. Add floral. Oh yeah, I was going to. Here it is. So this flower here, I did do a little inking around this one. And I was going to add it just to kind of keep um, the theme of these florals going throughout the journal. And I was going to add it over and around the camera here. Yeah, I like that. See right here, there's like this little hook. I don't even know what that is. It might be a shadow. But it mirrors this hook of the floral. So I like that that matched. <laughs> I know it's the little things so I love that it just really uh, made that more cohesive with the journal if you ask me adding that you could flip up perfect what should we do up at the top um, I did now let me just talk about this page over here for a moment so here's another smaller page now this page I like mixing smaller pages with the regular journal page size. It just gives interest to your journal. And so I did that with this one. And this one was a little bit more than four and a fourth. And then it was seven. So four and a fourth by seven was the smaller size that I cut down. So on this page, I again used this roll from Hobby Lobby and I cut out one of the florals. I added, I glued that on and then I added this little piece of lace I found in that bag I showed you guys. And then I sewed over all of this. I wanted to sew over these two pieces. So that's why I went ahead and added them before I did this tutorial. So we really could stop at this point, but I, I don't know. I think it needs something over here. Something to pull the gold color. Maybe we should just use this washy again. So there we go. Now here again was that lovely, I don't know if this is floral or just greenery made into colors, but I love it. And here's our little pocket. Add tag to the top left. Oh yes, I remember what I'm doing here. And this one, and this goes here, and this goes there, okay. And the flower. Oh, and yes, I was putting, okay. So, we're kind of doing a double layout here. So these were going to match. I'm going to put, I took one of the tags, like the one I showed you here, this one. I'm getting glue bits everywhere. So I cut that in half and took the middle out. And I'm going to adhere that down here, put this one up here on this side. Added some ribbon to that with a tiny attacher. And I'm going to leave these open so there'll be tuck spots here and here, like that. But what I thought I would do is actually put this flower down first. So when you pull this out, that's on the page. I don't know why, I just like that idea. So that's the gist. And then this little piece, again, is just graph paper. Tucking that in there. It fits perfectly. And that's just peeping out. And when you take it out, oh, look, that's cute. Okay. I have washi on my finger. All right. And this is just a single piece. And I'm tucking that up under there. Yeah, I like that idea. 
So that's that page. Now on these two pages, as you can see here on the right hand side, I went ahead and added some more of that Dollar Tree trim, the net trim. And I think all I was going to do on this page, because I absolutely love the clacks in this paper, I'm going to just add some floral with some washi. So these clocks seem big and heavy to me. Just that's kind of clocks, right? So I wanted a floral that was big and seemed heavy as well. So I chose this one. And I'm gonna just put that on the opposite side to kind of weigh everything out, give it some balance. And I'm gonna leave the rest here so there's some journaling spots or if you wanted to put a photo there, you could. And then I'm going to add my washi over that. Yeah, I'm liking that uh, just the way it is. I mean, you could certainly do more. I've ran out of fabrics, swatches. I could find some more. Yeah, I like that that pulls out that gold color. Nice. On to the next one. Now on this page, I loved these chains that were hanging down. That was, um, this actually had these chains. This clock here was actually at the top of these chains on the paper, and I loved that. Um, but I wanted to cut that paper in a certain way, so I lost the clock at the top. But I took it, I fussy cut it out, I layered it onto green cardstock, and then I added it to the bottom here, so you still get the two images together on the same page. Now for that, I just created another one of those cute little tags, and I'm going to tuck that right here and call that done. <laughs> now on this page, I have a cute little floral that I'm going to add. And I have a vintage German vocabulary card. And I'm going to add that with the English side up. I chose the brown because of the darker colors up here, and I thought that would just kind of go with that. Yeah, I really like that. Now, this page is a flip out, and it flips open. We have that nice wood paper. Now, what I decided to do on this one, I was going to leave it open for photos, but I decided not to. I actually saw this when I was working on it, and this is a little craft notepad. It's a really fat one, I love it. I haven't used very many of these, but I still love it. I got this a Tuesday morning a while back. And what I did was I took one out, I cut it in half, and I'm gonna make little journaling spots um, for that. I wish I would have made a diagram for that one. So we have craft blocks, two and floral medium, green floral, Oh yes, that's right. Green floral here and piano. Oh, okay. So we're doing the two craft blocks over here. All right, let's see, we're going to add these. We're gonna stagger these again. I'm mirroring the same height on the page for that, just so that it's easy on the eyes. And then we're gonna add the flowers over it. And what I should have done before I cut all these out was add adhesive to the back of these. So if you are cutting out floral, remember to add adhesive first to your paper. 
<laughs> it would have saved us some time. Okay. I really like this bold pop of green at the end. At this point, I have put down everything that I had in mind for the journal. And now what I do is I kind of go back over and look at my pages, to make sure I'm still satisfied with them. I might add some other things such as stamping, and I really think I might do that. Um, but yeah, just when I'm done with doing what I've been doing, like the stamps were extra, I didn't even have that planned. But that's what I normally do. I go back to the beginning. Oh, hello. I go back to the beginning of my journal and I start looking through the pages and I'm thinking, am I okay with this? Should there be something else that I might wanna add? Maybe some ribbon, some lace, some buttons. I do feel like it needs something. <laughs> You know, I just kind of just go through it one more time. I need a tag here. So I'm going to pull out my little stash that I have. You know what would be good here is something green to mirror the other page. So I have that graph paper. could add something else onto the paper here. Could be anything from a stamp. Now we have two stamps. So here's another thing that I do. Sometimes whatever I do in the front half of the book before we get to the middle, whatever I do on this side, sometimes I mirror that on the other side. I didn't do that in this book, which is great but sometimes I like to mirror the elements. So we have uh, two places for the graph paper on this side, and now we have two pace places on this side here and here. We have stamps on this side. Where are our stamps? <laughs> we have one there. Where did our stamps go? Oh, and one here. So we might wanna add some to the front of the book just to make it cohesive. I also use tickets on this side where I didn't use any tickets on this side. So that's the kind of thing that I do after I've got the base of the journal done. So, Let's see, it would be nice to have something on this piece right here. Oh, here's another building stamp. So maybe that would be a good idea from Romania to put that right there. Mm, I wish there was more brown over here. I like that stamp though. Does that go? That seems to go more with these tones down here. So let's stick her on. I like that. And if you can see, I'm doing it low enough to where you still see the gold stitch. You don't have to, I'm just doing it. <laughs> All right, yeah, I think that's good. I like that right there. Pulled in this color on this side of the page. And this, because it's a clock, pulled in that pattern over there. So you kind of get the gist of how I create my journals and my battery is running low and I don't want to have to wait to come back and show you. 
but I am going to be doing some more stamping. I'm going to go through one more time to see if I want to add anything. And you will probably have already seen the final journal in the um, video showcasing the entire project, which I'll have linked down below. So I'm going to go ahead and close out this video right now while I still have battery left. But I will give you one quick flip before we go just so that you can see how it is right now and what we have done together. If I could keep it straight, that would probably help, huh? <laughs> I really like how this has turned out. It's super cute and it was so fun to create. And then this opens like that. Yeah, that's a nice reveal. Okay, that's it for this video. I have shown you all of the things that I made in the basket. So that's it for now, and I'll see you next time.